Well, thank you, Michael and Meg, Meg and all of NFSA for this very fine award. I feel very honoured to receive it. It certainly came as a big surprise to me and um, quite unusual. I wonder what both my father and Ken Hall would have th thought about it, <laughs> and, uh, especially as they were rather friendly rivals in, the, in their heyday of filmmaking. Uh, but they did share the same studio space from time to time because uh, Cine Sound was Ken's, uh, Ken's uh, own, cine, own studio, the iconic old Cine Sound studios in Bondi Junction, which I have fond memories of. As a child, they were, it was a barn-like place, absolutely huge. And to me as a child, it was like a sort of Aladdin's cave and I had a great time exploring it. Uh, but the uh, interiors for several of Father's films were made there, including 40,000 Horsemen, which you will see tonight. I know many of you have seen it before, but um, uh, you can have a look again at the quite intricate settings that were constructed there uh, for the street and market scenes in both Cairo and Jerusalem. And uh, it was, it was a, Horseman was a fine film to make at the time. It was a rollicking, adventurous film made perhaps in slightly more innocent days of Australian filmmaking, but I'll come back to that later. Uh, my collating and uh, preservation of film really began after my mother died when I realised just how much we had, how much uh, material we had at home, and I felt that it seemed a pity that good photographs were being stored in cardboard boxes and shoe boxes, etc., and uh, moving about with us from place to place, and it was time something was done. And I began gradually sorting through, collating, identifying, and um, trying to see, the, uh, see to their eventual preservation. And Mother, of course, had gifted the films to NFSA, and uh, since I think we, we, we also sent on a little more because we found we had uh, a print of 40,000 horsemen on the old silver nitrate languishing in our garage. And for a time it was stored at um, uh, the Institute of Advanced Education in Toowoomba, which is now our university. And uh, we sent some of their, our photographs to them for a temporary exhibition there and asked them if they would like to keep uh, the nitrate copy of 40,000 Horsemen. Uh, they had hurried and rather worried, hurried and worried board meetings about this silver nitrate which they decided to put in their bunker. They had an outdoor bunker and I thought it was quite funny, it sounded like nuclear waste and we'd had this old film lying about our garage for so long. Uh, but eventually of course that went to the archives and uh, they did this wonderful restoration job of uh, transforming, uh, transferring I meant to say, the uh, silver nitrate film stock onto uh, safety film. That was just one of the many restoration jobs they did. And uh, so on through the years, it's uh, been an ongoing process on and off of trying to do something with this big collection. And uh, uh, it's meant spasmodic, but quite a number of trips to Canberra to NFSA who've been wonderfully helpful and um, in providing us with such wonderful uh, facilities and resources there. And uh, more recently, uh, earlier this year, in winter, I might hasten to add, we went to Canberra and uh, NFSA were wonderful to us then and I managed to go through a large amount of photographs and uh, try to identify them and caption them because some had sort of fallen through the cracks over the years. It's very easy to confuse war picture photographs. Uh, they tend to look a little alike and it's hard to be sure. Are, are they from 40,000 Horsemen or Rats of Dubrook or one of Dad's um, wartime documentaries? So a lot of, lot of work has been done like that and it's been great fun doing it. And my son Rick has been such a huge help in this. He's particularly good at ferreting out information. He's very good at this sort of thing and um, uh, I think he has a share in this, really, in, the, in this award. And um, so it's gone on like this for many years and I also have quite a lot of documentation still at home. Uh, letters and uh, old press cuttings and old film contracts and things like that, which as much of which is, are now in archival binders, thank goodness. Uh, and they've been of tremendous value to me in writing Dad's biography, which is now finished. It's at the uh, polishing up stage and um, all these things have been tremendously helpful to me and that's why I've held on to them for a little while longer. And uh, so uh, I have, haven't really set out with the biography to eulogise my parents, but 
more to uh, correct little inaccuracies that have surfaced from time to time over the years, uh, fill in the gaps and uh, give new insight into Charles Nelson Chevelle's people. Uh, because not so many people, I think possibly I'm the only person alive today who really knew them well, and um, people who worked for Father possibly often thought he was a little aloof or he was a taskmaster, I've heard that said, uh, but he was very, very focused on his work, so he had to, had to be like that possibly when he was working. But uh, behind the scenes, as you might say, off stage, <laughs> He was, he was rather different, and, uh, and only his very closest family and friends knew his zest for living and his amazing, his wonderful sense of humour. My mother and I had some hilarious adventures with him from time to time, because when you went out with Dad somewhere, you never knew what was going to happen. Uh, it, there was always the element of the unexpected. He was a, he was a very complex character. So it, it's been quite an adventure over the years, the writing of the book as well as the preservation of all this material. And the film you will see tonight, 40,000 Horsemen, I mean it has, um, it has its faults, it, it has a few corny bits here and there and there are some parts that will seem over sentimental, but of course it was the 40s and uh, we were entering World War II. Uh, we'd been through World War I and uh, just after Horseman was released the uh, young fellows were enlisting for World War II. So sentiment was running high in the country and it, I suppose in a sense it had to be fed. People needed the uh, morale boosting that that film gave them. And uh, so you'll see a lot of action in the film anyway. There's some good action apart from the bits, corny bits. <laughs> and um, uh, there's a darn good... Uh, charge scene, possibly one of the best ever made, and uh, all you Sydney siders out here tonight have a good look, a good hard look at the Cronulla Cornell sand dunes which, as they were in the 1940s because they're not there anymore. And I believe there's just one small dune area left which is used for fitness training and uh, uh, I believe that a lot of the sand went as landfill under Sydney buildings, including that of the Opera House, I'm told. So, um, but in those days, it stretched for mile after mile after mile. I don't know the exact uh, mileage, but it certainly was very la a large area, and it was a very good look-alike for the Sinai Desert. So Horseman still holds a place in our hearts. It has a special little niche for us, I think, because of the family connection with it, because Dad's uncle had been in charge of that light horse um, light horse brigade in, in, the, in that part of the war. And um, Uncle Harry was very helpful in, in showing some of his notes to Father and uh, making sure that the battle part of it was authentic. And uh, so there was a great liaison there. And it, also it was, as I said earlier, a slightly more innocent period in Australian filmmaking. Uh, when making a film was still rather good fun and there was a lot of camaraderie between the team and the crew, uh, the, I mean the cast and the crew, and uh, a lot of fun while they were making it. Uh, everything became a little bit more serious from Rats of Tobruk on. Many people have said that Father began to mature as a director through this film. It was a turning point for him and I think that's probably true. And. Um, of course, none of us know which way the film industry is going today. That's a, without a crystal ball, we have no way of knowing. But I do hope it moves forward courageously and creatively and perhaps with more maturity and um, with the degree of perseverance that Dad had and which I think is probably still needed today. And it's really only the young people who are coming on, the young younger filmmakers coming on who will be able to shape it and to give it a voice. I believe that film has a power, it has power of its own, it has the power to evoke, to inform or entertain, and the power to influence, and I think that's something America discovered early in the piece, and so that eventually every country in the world knew something about the American way of life through its films. So I think that's something we have to think about too. And uh, Father always believed the best way to make an Australian film was to make it thoroughly Australian. And I dare say that's true, but today perhaps we also have to look a little further and uh, because Australia itself has changed. So I wish it well in whichever way it does go. 
And thank you all for coming tonight, especially those who've journeyed a long way to be here, some of our family and friends uh, as well. And um, thank you again, and, and thank you to NFSA for this very fine award.